The year in sports for our area has been filled with moments of triumph, tragedy, controversy, and love. The WDRB sports team discusses what they think were the biggest stories of 2023. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everybody from WDRB Sports. I'm Tyler Griever with Tom Lane, Eric Crawford, Rick Bozich. We have had an eventful year in sports, to say the <laughs> yeah. least. And we have a lot of stories to try and discuss and break down as the best stories of the year. We'll start with Tom Lane. What's yours? How about the happiest homecoming we've seen here in a long time? <laughs> Has there been many better than Jeff Brom and, and the Brom family returning to Louisville. Very successful, obviously, as a player in this town at Trinity and at UofL. He coached at UofL, had been a successful coach. They were 10-3 and three this year, uh, exceeded expectations. Eight wins is what I saw as their ceiling. They won 10 games, could have won more, can win the Holiday Bowl. And the best thing about it is, in a time when the Louisville fan base has been fractured over a number of issues, they've gotten one of their own guys to get behind and the crowds came back. Well, obviously Jeff Brom defines Louisville as a hometown guy, but the event that defines Louisville, the Kentucky Derby dealt with a, a ton of controversy. Eric Crawford was on top of it, uh, the rash of horse deaths. Eric, I, we made some progress on this issue and how the sport's trying to address it, but still a long way to go. Yeah, and in terms of stories at our website at WDRB.com, the most read stories, this group of stories, the term oil at Churchill Downs, horse deaths before the Kentucky Derby, including a Derby contender while on ice who died during training the week before the official Derby week training started. Uh, it was a tough time and uh, there were eight horses that died uh, leading up to and during Kentucky Derby week. It caused a lot of stir at Churchill Downs, a lot of talk in the industry about how they can better look out for these things. We saw technological changes come online. We saw a new national governing body, HISA. And then Churchill Downs summer meet after more horse deaths during racing is suspended and moved to Ellis Park. So these are seismic kind of things in an industry that affects tens of thousands of people in the, in the state of Kentucky. It was a big story for us. While we're on the, the topic of sad news from the past year, we lost two icons uh, in coaching in Denny Crum, Bob Knight, two titans of the game, guys. Yeah, I mean, one of the great blessings of my career has been able to cover those two guys, both Naismith Hall of Famers, both won national championships. There was a period here from maybe the mid 70s to about 1987, 1988, where those two guys were the two titans of the game. Every year they were a threat to go to the Final Four or go to the national championship. Tremendously different personalities, and we saw that in their farewells with Coach Knight. Uh, uh, you know, he had had his issues and a fracture when he got fired with Indiana. He did come back one last time and sort of heal the wounds, but it was kind of a quiet farewell for him. With Coach Crum, he stayed here in Louisville much longer than anybody ever thought, became a community icon. Well, the night that, that Jeff Brom accepted and had his press conference to accept a Louisville coaching job, I left early to go down to the Fraser Museum where there were about 20 former Louisville players talking to Coach Crum via a Zoom video there and a crowd that was there to hear their stories, what he meant to them, what he continued to mean to them through their life, and what he meant to this city. And the Yums are now commemorating that with a seat in his memory, the seat that he sat in. And while well, we can't talk about the Yum Center without mentioning what, what it has become now in, in the state of Louisville men's basketball, and that is one of the biggest stories of the year, and that Kenny Payne just has not been able to, to get it going at Louisville. Year one, four and 28, that's obviously a storyline. And then year two, there just hasn't really been any momentum to, to speak of. There's a multitude of issues at, at play here. I think Kenny and, and the staff from the get-go just kind of misevaluated the roster and, and didn't properly construct it, didn't do a great job recruiting, whether it was high school or in the transfer portal. And then from there, uh, you could maybe chalk up year one to not having your guys, but then in year two, you replace the majority of the roster and we're still seeing a lot of the same problems. So uh, any way you try to slice it, guys, we thought it could go a lot better than this. And I don't know if anybody could have seen it going this poorly. Everybody assumed that Kenny would get this job and immediately go out and get a bunch of five-star guys and five-star guys aren't lining up to come to Louisville. It's taken some time to get some yeah. trust. He's had those recruits in. He's gotten one five-star freshman. He's had other recruits in. But, you know, when he lost Aaron Bradshaw and DJ Wagner, who played for an AAU program that's run by Purvis Ellison, those guys went to Kentucky. That was a big loss because things like that, I think they expected to go their way, and they didn't. And that's meant it's taken him longer to get things up and running, and there's not a lot of patience anywhere in the world right now. <laughs> and obviously the state of the program itself when Payne took over, not great. Nobody's going to argue oh, no. that any other way. <laughs> no, I mean, no, they had lost. Very, very 
pretty much not great. Yeah, yeah. People forget they had lost 15 out of 18 at the end of the season before. So yeah. it's not like this just started under him. Well, we will be here covering every nook and cranny, no matter if it's negative, positive, anything. That's what WDRB Sports does. This best team we could ask for, Rick Bowes and Chair Crawford, Tom Lane. I'm Tyler Griever. Thanks for watching. Have a happy holiday.